Hi, my name is Pon Chat, and I'm doing my extra credit video on lecture 17 of valence bond theory. So, okay. So, the valence bond theory was developed by Linus Pauling. Um, he actually won the Nobel Prize in 1954 for his work. And a key understanding that we all need to know is that we have to remember that valence bond theory is just a theory and it doesn't always explain everything. So later on, we'll learn about all the other theories. Um, so valence bond theory uh, describes chemical bonding specifically and valence bond theory states that the overlap of incompletely filled atomic orbitals lead to the formation of a chemical bond between two atoms. The unpaired electrons are shared and a hybrid orbital is formed. So in this sentence, we find that valence bond theory is just describing the overlap of um, orbitals between two atoms and it forms a covalent bond. Um, unpaired electrons create a hybrid orbital, and we will learn that there are two types of overlapping called a sigma bond and a pi bond. So in this picture, we have two hydrogen atoms, and they each have orbitals, and we will see that they come to overlap and make this hybrid orbital in the middle. So with sigma bonds, um, it's a bond formed by the overlap of orbitals in an end-to-end -end fashion. So it produces a single bond and the electron density is concentrated along the internuclear axis. And in this picture, we have examples of an S orbital and an S orbital, and they come together to make this SS or, or overlap. And in this one, we have two p orbitals and it comes over to overlap each other to make a hybrid orbital and an important thing that we need to distinguish is that it's doing an end-to-end -end fashion overlap so they're kind of in like a horizontal plane so we have the internuclear axis like right here in the middle so as we can see we have this and the p orbitals are around it so that's why it would be along the um the internuclear axis. And in this example, we also have an S orbital right here and a P orbital right here. And they come over to make an S and a P overlap. And again, there's the internuclear axis and the electron density would be concentrated along that. So with pi bonds, they're formed by an overlap of orbitals from a side to side fashion and electron density is concentrated below and above the internuclear axis and we'll see later on how that happens. Um, they form double and triple bonds and for double bonds, um, they have a pi bond and a sigma bond and for a triple bond, we have two pi bonds and a sigma bond. And any pi bond has a sigma bond. So that's an important key thing to remember. Um, so we have two um, p orbitals right here, and this plane is the internuclear axis that's just there right in the middle. And so since it's doing a side to side um, overlap, there will be, they will connect and have two bonds formed up top and below. So this is, this explains how the electron density is concentrated below and above the internuclear axis. So with bonds, here's a summary. So we have two atoms and we have one single bond between that. So there's one sigma bond and the same two atoms can have a double bond, which would have one sigma and one pi bond. And then with a triple bond, we have one sigma bond with two pi bonds as we talked about. Um, so hybridizing orbitals. Hybridization is the mixing of the atomic orbitals in an atom to produce a set of hybrid orbitals. And so first 
uh, we need to draw the Lewis structure and then we find the steric number and with the steric number we can find the electron geometry and with the Lewis structure we can find the molecular geometry of each molecule and then we match the hybrid orbitals to its steric number and so those are the steps of how we find the hybridized orbitals. So the available orbitals are an S, a P, a P, a P, and D, 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 D orbitals. And those are all the available orbitals. So an ex um, a type of hybrid orbital we have is an SP hybrid orbital. And an SP hybrid orbital, um, it makes a linear structure in molecules. So that linear molecule means um, 180 degrees. Um, the two S orbitals and one of the two P orbitals hybridize to form two SP orbitals. The front lobes face away from each other and form a straight line leaving a 100 degree angle between the two orbitals. And this formation is made to minimize electron repulsion and because only one p orbital was used, we are left with two unaltered two p orbitals that the atom can use. And these p orbitals are at right angles to one another and to the line formed by the two sp orbitals. So with an sp orbital, um, it is distinguished by the steric number of two. So in this picture, we have an s orbital right here and a p orbital. So they would hybridize to make two sp hybrid orbitals. So like the um, above, it says that we have um, two unaltered 2p orbitals that the atom can use. So an example of an sp hybrid orbital is uh, beryllium and chlorine. And so we have beryllium, which has an sp orbital, and then chlorine that has p orbitals. So the first step we would do is to draw the Lewis structure for it. So we would just have this. And since we would first count the steric number, it would be one and two since steric number is the amount of atoms and lone pairs attached to the central atoms. So since steric number is two, that would mean the electron geometry is um, linear. And since there's no lone pairs on it, it would the molecular geometry would also be linear, which makes a hundred degree um, angle. So with an sp2 hybrid orbital, um, they explain the trigonal planar structure of molecules. So that makes 120 degrees. Um, the two s orbitals and the two and two of the two p orbitals hybridize to form three sp orbitals. Um, the frontal lobes align themselves in the trigonal planar structure in order to minimize electron repulsion and to improve the overlap and the remaining p orbitals remains unchanged and it is perpendicular to the plane of the three sp2 orbitals. So um, sp2 hybrid orbitals have a steric number of three, which means that it's filling the s, the p, and the p orbital. So that counts to three. So that explains why it would be the steric number of three. And in this picture, you have an S orbital and P orbitals, which would hybridize to make this to P, SP2 hybrid orbital. So an example of SP2 hybrid orbital would be the boron and chlorine, which the formula would make boron chloride. So we have to draw the Lewis structure first. So one, and then count the steric numbers. So one, two, three, so since the steric number is three, that would make the molecular geometry um, uh, trigonal planar, since it also has no lone pairs. So that comes to the angle of 120. So this would be what it would actually look like. So with the sp3 hybrid orbital, um, it explains the tetrahedral structure of molecules. So that makes 109.5 degrees. And the two S orbitals and all three of the two P orbitals hybridize to form um, four SP3 orbitals. The frontal lobes align themselves like this picture shown below 
Um, in this structure, electron repulsion is also minimized. So that's kind of the whole point of this is so that way the electron repulsion is minimized and they become more stable. Um, so sp3 hybrid orbitals have a steric number of four. And so that would mean it has an s, a p, a p, and a p orbital. And so in this picture, we have one 2s orbital and three 2p orbitals. That would make four sp3 orbitals. So in this picture, the they are 109.5 degrees apart, and we have four sp3 hybrid orbitals going on in this molecule. Um, an example of sp3 hybrid orbital would be um, carbon and hydrogen, which makes CH4. And there's four carbons, um, which sp3 hybrid orbitals. And we also have four hydrogen 1s atomic orbitals. So that gives each um, hydrogen a space for them. And each of the four CH bonds results from head on overlap of a singly occupied carbon sp3 hybrid orbital with a hydrogen 1s orbital. So this molecule is methane. Um, so something new is that when we run out of p orbitals, we start um, to use d orbitals. Um, but this is only possible for elements starting in the third period because um, the periodic table, um, the d orbitals are only available to um, elements in periods three and above because with the electron configuration, the period three is only, um, is the only one that starts with the d orbitals. Um, so periods one and two are not possible because they do not have d orbitals. So we have sp3d hybrid orbitals and sp3d2 hybrid orbitals that can be formed, but again, it's only for elements beyond period two, since period uh, three and above are, um, they have d orbitals according to the electron configuration. So with sp3d hybrid orbitals, they have a steric number of five. So that would mean it has an sp, p, d orbital, which makes sp3d hybrid orbital. And since it has a steric number of five, the molecular geometry would be bipyramidal. So in this picture, we have one, two, three, four, five electron or atoms connected to the central atom. So that would make the steric number five. And so here we have the hybridized orbitals. So there would be um, five sp3d hybrid orbitals going on. Um, an example of an sp3d hybrid orbital is phosphorus and chlorine. So that comes together to make PCl5. And so again, first we draw the Lewis structure. Uh, we have phosphorus in the middle and five chlorine atoms. So we count for steric number. So one, two, three, four, five. So steric number is five since there's five atoms connected. And since it's five, the um, electron configuration would be bipyramidal. And since there's no lone pairs on this, it would also make the molecular geometry um, bipyramidal. And so this is actually what's going on in here. We have sp3d and p orbitals from chlorine. So they come together to make that. Okay, so we have sp3d2 hybrid orbitals next. And this has a steric number of six. So we have s, p, 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 d, and d. Um, and this makes an octahedral molecular geometry. And so in this picture, we have a central atom right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six atoms connected to the central atom, which makes a steric number six. And so with the steric number six, we have sp3d2 hybrid orbital. So it would make um, six sp3d2 like this picture. Um, an example of an sp3d2 hybrid orbital would be bromine and fluorine. So that would make um, B 
BrF4. So if we draw the Lewis structure, we have fluorine, four fluorines on the side and bromine in the middle. And it would have two lone pairs right here. And so we count for steric numbers. So one, two, three, four, and steric number also includes lone pairs. So five and six. And since it has a steric number of six, it would have a shape of um, the octahedral. Um, so that would mean that it has sp3d2 hybrid orbital. So with valence bond theory, um, there are, um, it's good for some things, but also not good for some things. So I'm gonna name some. And so we can predict the molecular geometry of um, each molecule. Uh, we can predict bond angles and polarity. And these are a, um, possible because we can use that with the VSEPR to find out their molecular geometry. So that includes bond angles and the polarity with the Lewis structure. Um, it cannot predict bond energy. It cannot calculate bond order. Uh, it cannot explain magnetic properties. So magnetic properties are like um, the diamagnetic and paramagnetic. So we can't do those. Um, and it also can't explain the absorption and emission spectra. So an example of like putting this into application, we have this problem that says how many sigma and pi bonds are there in these molecules? So in this molecule, uh, we need to remember that um, sigma bonds are in, from what we learned, sigma bonds are in every single bond. Um, a single bond has one sigma, a double bond has one sigma and one pi, and a triple bond has one sigma and two pi's. So we need to count the sigma first. So since sigma bonds are in every single type of bond, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's six sigma bonds. So let's count the double and triple bonds. So since each double bond has one uh, sigma and one pi, there's one pi bond here and a triple bond has one sigma and two pi. So two pi bonds here. So one plus two equals three. So in this whole molecule, we have six sigma bonds and three pi bonds. And then in this molecule, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sigma bonds and two pi bonds here since there's a triple bond and one pi bond here since it's a double bond. So that also has three pi bonds and eight sigma bonds. And in this molecule, so we need to remember that each of these rings also have, uh, they all add up to four bonds. So whatever we don't have, we need to um, be able to uh, draw. So since this is a carbon and it only has two, this would have an, a hydrogen to it, two hydrogens to it, and that would equal four. Uh, this one has one, two, and three. So we need to add one hydrogen to it. This one has one, two, three. So we need to add another hydrogen to this. Uh, this one has one, two, three, and four. So we don't need to add it. This one has one, two, three, so we need to add one to it. Um, this one has one, two, three, four, so we don't need to add anything. And this has one, two, three, four. So we're done there. And so let's now count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, okay, wait, let's start over. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 sigma bonds in this one. And so now we have to count the pi bonds. So we look for the double bond and the triple bond. So we have one triple bond right here, which has two pi bonds and this double bond, which has one pi and one pi. So one, two, and plus two. So that's four pi bonds. Uh, 
So this is the second problem, and we have to state the hybridization of the central atom, the molecular shape, and the bond angles for each of the molecules. So we start again by drawing the Lewis structure. So once we have the Lewis structure drawn, we have two fluorine and two lone pairs on the sulfur. Um, so count the steric number. So we have one, two, three, four. Steric number four, which means that the molecular geometry or the electron geometry would be tetrahedral. Um, the molecular shape would have to be, since it has two um, lone pairs on it, it would be bent and that would have an angle. So since it's tetrahedral, it has an angle of 109.5, but since we have two lone pairs, that takes a little bit more space. So it would be less than 109.5. Um, in this one, we have xenon with fluorine. So four fluorines with xenon has two lone pairs. So that's one, so let's count the steric number. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means it has a steric number six, um, and it has a sp3d2 hybrid orbital, and the molecular geometry would be, so the electron geometry would be octahedral, but since it has two lone pairs, it would be square planar, which means it has an angle of 90, less than 90 degrees, because it is, um, has lone pairs that make it uh, but a little bit less angled. So thank you.